Amen. Amen. I surrender. Amen. God is good. 
Good evening, good evening. Welcome to Bible Study. Uh, this is a broadcast of the Children of Faith Baptist Church in Oklahoma City. I am Pastor Juan. Good to see each and every one of you online this morning. Uh, this morning, it's not morning, it's evening. I see uh, Lady Kizzy online. I see Elder Juan Sr. online. Dad, I uh, assume uh, Sister Vanessa, Mom, is online as well. Uh, let me know that you're here. Type hashtag live if you're watching the replay. Type hashtag replay and let me know that you stopped by. Amen. Amen. Let me say God is good. That bothers me just a little bit there. All right. Now, not so much in the way. All right. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and have our announcements and then we'll get right into Bible study this evening. Amen. Uh, so first of all, let's remember that we can submit our prayer requests online at the church's website, reallovokc.org. You can also submit those through Facebook Messenger on our Facebook page. Just search for Shilohe Baptist OKC, or you can search Real Love OKC as one word. And again, submit your prayer requests on Facebook Messenger through our Facebook page or directly on the church website, reallovokc.org. Right. Bible study each and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time right here where you are currently watching this video. Amen. And we uh, have been talking a lot about salvation for the past few months. Uh, justification, sanctification, verse of Southern Saints. Uh, for the past few Wednesdays, we've been looking at the question, can a Christian lose their salvation? And uh, looking at some of those more difficult texts. And, of course, uh, as I always say, we interpret the more difficult texts with those that are more straightforward and easier to understand. Amen. Because, uh, of course, we interpret the Bible um, as a whole and not uh, individual verse or individual passages by themselves. Amen. And so you're welcome to join us each and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for virtual Bible study. If you have not signed up for our text messaging service, we invite you to do so. Text the keyword real love to 84576. Again, text the keyword real love, which is one word, to 84576. You can also visit the church website, reallovokc.org. Scroll down to Stand Connected. <laughs> I forgot what the link was. <laughs> Scroll down to Stand Connected, click on that, and you can enter your information right there on the church website to be subscribed for that free service of the Shuttle Faith Baptist Church in Oklahoma City. Standard text messaging rates do apply. <laughs> to the members of Shuttle Faith, let's remember that we can submit our tithes and offering online at the church website, reallovokc.org. Uh, we can uh, also to our guest, if you feel so led to contribute to the furtherance of this ministry, you too can visit our website, reallovokc.org. Just click on online giving and you can enter your payment information and um, right there on the website. We appreciate the continual support of this ministry. <clears throat> so uh, let's get into Bible study. We're going to be looking at 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3, well, 3 through 5. We'll see if we go further. But, excuse me, I was primarily just going to look at verses 3 through 5. Um, and we probably won't be too long tonight. <clears throat> but, uh, let's see. Okay, so let's go ahead and read it. And then um, I want, want us to look at the, the magnitude of what these verses are implicating, right? And uh, they speak towards the future. Uh, they speak about the living hope that we have in Christ. And um, a little different than what we've been looking at, because I referred to this and we've... Uh, you know, read it, but I really haven't broken it down as a part of this series. Um, I did preach through uh, First Peter a while back, 
and I think those are available on the YouTube channel. I can't remember. I think they are. Um, series Elect Exiles. So um, you can also definitely look that up. <clears throat> okay, so let me enlarge this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by God, who are kept by the power of God, through faith for salvation, ready to reveal in the last time. So let me read that one more time. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. Amen. Uh, first Peter chapter one, verses three through five. So uh, we want to talk about uh, our living hope. Our living hope. That is the focus of this. And this text tonight speaks towards the future. Um, this expresses how um, our salvation is more than a here and now experience, but a revelation of God's plan through history. Um, salvation is always spoken of as right now and not yet. Right now and not yet. And um, we are saved right now, but we are. Our, our salvation is not fully realized in the present. It will be in the future. And what holds the present and the future together is not us, but it is the power of God. Okay. Uh, this living hope we have, um, this living hope um, that we are to praise God for is called an inheritance. It's called an inheritance in verse four. And then in salvation, uh, it's called salvation in verse five. The word hope carries the ideal of expectancy. And this hope is not only living, but it gives life. It's not only a living hope, but it gives life. The living hope is according to God's abundant mercy, right? And according to his abundant mercy, he has begotten us. And through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, abundant mercy paints the picture of what God uh, providing being more than enough and not just sufficient, all right? If he just had mercy on us, that would be sufficient. But it says, not just simply to his, not according to his mercy, but his abundant mercy. And so this mercy is not just sufficient uh, for us, but it's more than enough. Amen. Just like the end of chapter five in the book of Romans speaks of God's grace covering our sin. It's not just simply enough to cover our sin. It's an overabundance of grace to cover more than uh, this living hope is providing through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, taking on all the sins of humanity. It is based upon uh, the, the, the resurrection of Christ from the dead. Amen. And he says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again. And that's born, being born again, the born again experience, regeneration to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. And just look at it through 
the resurrection. And then we get to verse four, to an inheritance, right? To an inheritance. The living hope is also described as an inheritance. An inheritance is something that you receive as a result of relationship. Um, this is not simply a future earthly inheritance, which to some degree it will be, but a spiritual and eternal inheritance. All right. Um, this inheritance is available to all the children of God. Amen. I love how the Bible, when it speaks of inheritance and it describes the children of God, that it's translated sons. Amen. It calls us all sons, men and women, sons of the promises of God. Amen. Um, in Jewish history, that the sons would receive an inheritance, daughters wouldn't. But he calls all believers sons. So I, I truly love those translations that take that position and translate that masculine as sons and not simply children, because there's a theological reason why it is male although it applies to all believers, male and female, and we don't want to miss that in those translations. So Peter calls this inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that it does not fade away. So I want to look at these Greek words for a moment. Incorruptible, you know what, we'll put this, we'll put this in the PowerPoint real quick. Yeah, let me enlarge this. Incorruptible, the um, <laughs> has a root word, and then at the beginning it has the not. So not to destroy or corrupt, incorruptible, undefiled, not to defile. Uh, though the verb means especially to defile, is defile as uh, defiled by staining, as with color. Um, it also translates defile, 1 Corinthians 8, 7, is to besmirch, uh, as with myrrh. Uh, we might render unstained, though the word is not used with any conscious reference to his etymology. And that does not fade away. Uh, this particular Greek word is used by Peter only, only once we have here, um, not to wither, not to wither not to wither. Worsby said, I'm just going to add this slide in here too. I wouldn't, wouldn't going to do all this, but I think it helps to see. Worsby. Incorruptible, which means that nothing can ruin it. Incorruptible. And again, it's talking about our salvation, the, the living hope we have. It's incorruptible, undefiled, and it will not fade away. Incorruptible means that nothing can ruin it. Nothing can ruin it. This is talking about salvation. Undefiled. Not only can it not be ruined, but it cannot be stained or cheapened in any way. Amen. You know, um, I got on a white shirt. You know, have you ever wasted something on a white shirt? <laughs> uh, it may be difficult to get the stain out. Um, and, and the thing about white, um, you know, any discoloration is going to show up. And so if you can't get that stain out, then um, obviously it's stained and it's cheapened. 
um, because you can't really wear it just anywhere, right? You can work, do some work around the house with it, but you're not going to go in public with a white shirt with a big old stain. <laughs> it's not going to come out, right? And it, it, and it does not fade away. It will never grow old because it is eternal. It cannot wear out, nor can it disappoint us in any way. Again, because it's eternal. I like how uh, Wiersbe um, does that whenever you wear it, yeah. And, and this describes, uh, again, the salvation that we have, right? This inheritance that we have in Christ, this living hope that we have. It's described as an inheritance here in verse four. And it says this inheritance uh, can't be ruined. It can't be stained. It, it cannot wear out because it's eternal. And this is talking about our salvation. And one thing about verses three through five um, translation, I, I believe this is New King James. Um, the translation has verses three through five is one sentence in the Greek. Greek manuscripts themselves didn't have sentence structure. They didn't have paragraphs. Um, all the words were just ran together with no spaces. And so uh, it's complex when we translate it to English. And so this is a very extensive sentence because it carries one idea, right? So it's one, the New King James translates it as one sentence. So uh, incorruptible describes the substance of the inheritance. It, it can be ruined. Undefiled describes the beauty, right? It can be stained. And not fading away describes the eternal value. And again, this is talking about salvation, our inheritance. The Bible says that this inheritance is reserved in heaven. It's reserved in heaven, right? Salvation, not yet. I mean, right now and not yet. Right now and not yet. When we come to a true repentant faith in Jesus Christ, uh, we stand justified before God. Christ has suffered and paid the penalty for our sin, right? We're, we're saved. We can't get unjustified. We can't get any more justified than what we are. We are justified. That's right now. That's our present experience in salvation. But then the not yet, there will come a day when it be fully realized. This is why this living hope is spoken of as an inheritance. An inheritance is something that is waiting for us in the future. Amen. Now we may have the benefit of that inheritance as children, but we don't receive the inheritance until that appointed time. Right. So we have the benefits of being a child of God, although our salvation is not fully realized. So it's spoken of here in verse four as an inheritance and that that inheritance, our salvation, that living hope. Again, those three words are all talking about the same thing in these uh, three verses. Right. They're all talking about the same thing. It says that it is reserved in heaven for you, right? For believers. And um, I mean, talking about security, that's that expresses how secure it is. It's reserved in heaven, a reservation in heaven, right? You can't get any more secure than that. It is not kept in a vault where the lock can be picked. It's not kept in a bank where it can be robbed, but it's reserved in heaven, right? It is kept and guarded by God himself. And I would say God the Father. It's kept and guarded by him. Right. This inheritance, this living hope, is again described as salvation in verse five. 
salvation in verse five. The salvation is kept by the power of God through faith and ready to be revealed in the last time. And again, it's speaking forward. The, the right now and not yet of salvation. The Greek word for kept in verse five is a military term used for guarding a city. Amen. Uh, Philippians 4 and 7 says that God will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So, uh, <laughs> so the, it, it paints the picture. And I, I've said this before, Eastern languages paint pictures. Uh, Western languages are more logic, right? And so it, it paints that picture of being kept as a military term used about guarding a city, right? From any onslaught, from any attackers, right? Uh, the present principle indicates something in progress, a continual process of protection, right? And this is an act of God, right? We're not protecting and guarding ourselves, our, the, the very essence of our salvation. This is done by God. And so that expresses the security that we have as believers. Present participle, again, is in progress. He is keeping, it is kept by the power of God, a continual process, amen. The inheritance is kept and the heirs are guarded. This is what Bingo said. This expresses the security of our salvation. The salvation is not only reserved in heaven for us, but is ready to be revealed in the last time. And this speaks forward, speaking of our glorification. Again, the not yet, I mean, the right now, we are saved. If you come into a true saving, repentant faith in Jesus Christ, you are saved. You can't get more saved right? Justified positional sanctification. And that's our salvation is reserved in heaven, but it's ready to be revealed in the last time. The right now and not yet at the last time. So it speaks forward. It speaks of something in the future, a living hope. Amen. We don't fully have it. So it's a hope. It's, it's a living hope in that it is rooted and grounded in the person and work of Jesus Christ. It's not only a living hope, but it's a hope that gives life, eternal life, to those who believe. Right? Something in the future. It's an inheritance, something in the future. And this salvation, as it is uh, stated in verse 5, is ready to be revealed in the last time. And it's ready to be revealed because it's kept in heaven by the power of God. It's ready to be revealed in the last time because it's incorruptible, it's undefiled, it doesn't fade away, it's reserved in heaven for those who believe. Are you with me today, church? Amen. Weiss says we receive our justification at the moment we believe. We are receiving our sanctification, namely the victory over sin and growth in the Christian life now. We will yet receive that part of salvation which awaits us in glory. Amen. Which awaits us in glory. Talking about our living hope. Talking about the living hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and look at, um, I believe this is verses six through nine. And I'm, I'm putting the PowerPoint together uh, as we are going, because I wouldn't intentionally, I wouldn't originally going to do this. So I have to uh, formatted and everything because it's not a, and paste and uh, copy and paste and uh, scripture. Um, it doesn't always look nice 
when you put it into uh, PowerPoint. So, First Peter verses, First uh, Peter one six through nine. In this you greatly rejoice. In what? In the living hope. In the inheritance. In salvation. Again, that that's that's the big ideal. That's the big subject matter in verses three through five. Those all describe the same thing. Living hope, inheritance, salvation. In this you greatly rejoice. So now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Although we rejoice in the salvation we have received, it does not negate us from trials, right? It's, it's, it's very interesting how God does that. He justifies us. We become positionally sanctified. We live out our faith, progressive salvation, progressive sanctification. But that does not negate us from trials. We still experience the trials of life in general, as well as trials as the result of our faith in Jesus Christ. Right. And so the purpose of trials are to test the genuineness of our faith. And our faith is more precious than gold. Our, our faith uh, is to be tested. This testing it's not a testing of the trials and tribulations of life in general, but specifically that which results because of our faith in Jesus Christ. The proof or the evidence of our faith should lead to our praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And where revelation means to um, unveil, it means to unveil that which is previously hidden. And so Jesus Christ is hidden now in that we don't see him. But when he comes again, he will be revealed once again to humanity, his second coming. And so for the church, again, we, we receive um, our rewards. Our sins have been dealt with at the cross of Calvary. And we receive rewards based on the work that we have done. The testing of our faith to reveal how genuine, how real it is. This Jesus who we have not seen, yet believe and love. And I have never seen Jesus physically. I've never touched him. I've never heard his voice, yet by faith, I believe the word of God is true. Right? And y'all remember Thomas, down Thomas, amen, after the resurrection, the disciples proclaimed to him about Christ being risen. He said, I won't believe unless I can touch him. So when Jesus reveals himself that second Sunday, <laughs> amen, after his resurrection, where the disciples were gathered. And that's a sermon in itself. Amen. That's why the Christian church meets on Sunday. Since the time of the resurrection, the church has always gathered on the first day of the week. And by the time of the writing of the book of Revelation by the apostle John, he refers to it as the Lord's day. Um, I have this book, The Apostolic Fathers, um, in English, because it was written, written in Greek. 
uh, the Diatike. It's one of the, the books that's in this book, but the Diatike is kind of like the early beliefs of the early church. And it speaks about the Lord's day. And, and this is uh, turn of the first century writings, post um, canon. And when I say canon, I'm speaking of the New Testament. Post New Testament writings, of course, the last book of the New Testament was written around 90 AD, the book of Revelation. And, and uh, we have early Christian writings in this book called the Apostolic Fathers, um, the turn of the century. And many written by apostles of the Apostle John, our disciples of the Apostle John. But the Diatike gives early, um, and I'm, I'm sorry, we're not even talking about the Lord's Day. <laughs> I just threw that in there. So let me get back on the subject at hand before I go, you know, down a, a, a wormhole. All right. So uh, as I was saying before I interrupted myself, um, I believe the word of God is true. Down Thomas, you know, he has the opportunity to see Jesus. Jesus uh, appears before him and other disciples. Uh, Thomas is able to handle Jesus, amen, to see Jesus. And, you know, he says, my Lord and my God, right? He's calling Jesus God. And Jesus didn't correct him because he is God come in the flesh. And Jesus said, blessed are you. He says, says, Thomas, you believe because you see me. He said, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And we are those because we haven't seen the physical risen Christ. Amen. So because of this faith, even in the midst of trials, believers can rejoice in inexpressible joy and full of glory. And Jesus, who I don't see, gives me glorious joy in the midst of what I do see. It is inexpressible because words are incapable and insufficient to describe the joy of salvation. Amen. When you when you really reflect and contemplate on salvation, I mean, it, it's, it's hard to to really describe, right? Truly what it means, especially to a true believer in Jesus Christ. And so Peter says, in this, you greatly rejoice. Though for now a little while, if need be, you have been grieved with various trials, that the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than, than, uh, than gold that perishes, though it be tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And of course, that just makes me reflect on Romans 8, 28, for we know, and again, Paul, when he says that, it's not book knowledge. Amen. It's not knowledge I gained from a book. It's not something I was taught, right? But it's knowledge based on experience. Paul said, I know from my relationship with Jesus Christ and my experience with him, that this is how he can make this statement in Romans 8, 28. For I know that all things, all things, Y'all know I say the good, the bad, and the ugly. All things work to the good of those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. And it works to our good, all things, because of the living hope that we have in Christ, the inheritance that we have in Christ, the salvation that we have in Christ. In this you greatly rejoice in spite of what you're going through in your life. But what you're going through in your life has purpose. It is the testing of your faith. Amen. And it says that it's more precious than gold because gold perishes. 
Amen. But your inheritance, your living hope, your salvation in Christ Jesus, amen, is incorruptible, undefiled, and it does not fade away. But there will come a day at the revelation of Jesus Christ where your faith will be found to pray to the praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Of the salvation that you have. And this Jesus whom you have not seen, but yet you love. Though now you do not see him, you still believe in him. You rejoice with inexpressible, uh, with joy inexpressible and full of glory. The glory of God the glory of the Son of God in your life, receiving the end of your faith, a conclusion to your faith, the consummation of your faith, the ultimate salvation of your souls. The right now and not yet of salvation. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'll tell y'all what, let's go ahead and, <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, let's go ahead. I, I can't stop now because we, we got to, um, I was just going to do verses three through five. I wouldn't plan on doing all this, but we're going to put verses 10 through 12 up. And again, I got to format this right quick. Because it, it, this is this, it just builds on each other. At the beginning of First uh, Peter, here it forms the the foundation. Amen. For for the rest of the book, and the rest of the book, he's encouraging those uh, Jewish believers. Amen. Yeah, there we go. Um, <clears throat> verses 10, um, you know, 10 through 12. Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully. Who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them, it was revealed that not only to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desired to look into. Uh, one commentary says that uh, the salvation believers experience now, which will be consummated in the future, was also prophesied in the past. <laughs> Amen. When God spoke, uh, what God spoke of in the past through the prophets concerning salvation is experienced by us today through the preaching of the gospel because of Christ's fulfillment of what the prophets were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write in times past. All right. And then Luke um, chapter 24, verses 44 through 47, um, which, you know, I reference quite a bit also. It says, then he said to them, talking about Jesus, talking about his, uh, after his resurrection, before his ascension, um, his, as I say, his 40 day school of ministry, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, in the prophets, in the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And he's speaking of the, the whole Old Testament, right? The law of Moses is Torah, the first five books of the Bible, the prophets, amen, um, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But the prophets deal with 
the prophets. <laughs> and then the Psalms, it's called the Psalms because that scroll would list those other books in the Old Testament, mainly the history books, but it would begin with Psalms. So it's the role, the Psalms role. Um, and so the Old Testament, the scriptures, I mean, Jesus teaches how they spoke of him and how they had to be fulfilled. In verse 46 of Roman uh, of Luke 24, then he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And in Peter, in 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 20 and 21, knowing this first and no prophecy of scripture is given by private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of men, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Speaking of the, the inspiration of the word of God. All right. And so what we enjoy today is salvation that will be consummated in the future was prophesied in the past through the prophets inspired uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. In verse 12, to look into literally means to stoop and look sideways, to marvel, even the angels who have watched God's plan unfold throughout history, marvel as spectators of what we are blessed to experience. Amen. The things which the angels desire to look into, they marvel at the unveiling of God's plan of salvation through human history. Right, because the angels are not born; they were created. So they've been able to just watch the plan of God being unveiled through human history since since the beginning. So they marvel. Paul, I mean, Paul, Peter says they marvel at what God has done. And they, they marvel as spectators because they don't experience salvation like humanity. And so they're spectators of what God, I mean, that's why the, uh, uh, was it the psalmist or was it in the prophets? What is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you visit him? Amen. So we are blessed to experience this salvation right now, consummated in the future, prophesied in the past through, through the prophets under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What do y'all think about that? <laughs> Amen. And this is all about the living hope that we have in salvation. And so God deserves the praise. He deserves the glory. Amen. Amen. So uh, again, I was just going to look at verses three through five, but like I say, it just really builds on each other uh, going all the way down to verse 12. But, you know, we should have a greater appreciation for the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I think I might have missed something in here, but that's all right. All right. Um, <clears throat> if anyone has any questions, comments, um, please type those in the chat. Amen. Uh, I think, oh, yeah, I already picked the song. Amen. So we're going to just go ahead and uh, in that there for tonight, and I guess I still finished a little early. It's not eight o'clock yet. <laughs> um, boy, I guess I needed that. I don't know about y'all, but I needed that. Amen. All right. Um, 
Y'all continue to pray for me as I pray for you. The Lord says the same. We'll see you Sunday morning, 10 o'clock Central Standard Time, right here where you're currently watching this video. Oh, yeah.